Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a retro style pencil box. Well, I remember these from when I was younger and they were always fun. I always enjoyed having one. And I think even though it's a very retro style and maybe a pencil box or a pencil case is a little outdated with today's technology, I still think it's a valuable project and I still think that some children or some people will enjoy this project and appreciate the actual workmanship that goes into it. And that's why we're gonna visit this one today. It all starts off with a block of cherry. So let's head over to the bench and see what I've got in store for this one. So I had this piece of cherry up in the rack. It is overkill for what we need, uh, much too large. It's 16 inches long, it's two inches thick, and three and three quarter inches wide. But what I've done for starters is I've squared up all sides. One side using the jointer, then the perpendicular face here on the jointer as well, and then finished it off at the table saw and the thickness planer and tested it to make sure that all four sides are square. Our ends are not square to the body, but that for now doesn't matter. We're going to treat this pretty much like a bandsaw box. So I think the first thing that I want to do is off of the top of this, I'm going to cut a quarter inch thick slab off of the top of our box over at the bandsaw. Now, truth be told, before ripping this quarter inch slab off the top of our box, I did take it over to the table saw and rip it down to a little closer to its final dimension at three inches wide. All right, so at this point now, what I want to do is leaving our bandsaw set up exactly like it is. We're gonna turn this over and we're going to take a slice off of each side all the way along the same thickness, that quarter inch thickness. So let's get those two pieces sliced off. So we should have one slice for our top and one taken off of each side. So at this point, what I want to do is I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and we are going to slice off of the bottom a quarter inch slab. And now I'm just readjusting my fence to give us a cut of about five eighths wide. And what we're going to do is I'm gonna take away this bottom piece I'm going to mark it as the bottom, and once I get that done, we're going to take another slab off the bottom at that 5 eighths of an inch thick. I've readjusted the fence to be about an eighth of an inch away from the blade. We have our initial quarter inch piece, our 5 eighths, and then the next one in line now, we're going to take this over to the fence, and we're going to take a 1 eighth slice off the bottom of it. Now I don't want to be too repetitive, but I want to make sure we're all on the same page. So a quarter inch slab off the top, then we cut our two quarter inch sides, then we cut our quarter inch slab off the bottom, then we cut five eighth slab off the bottom again, and then we cut a one eighth slab off the bottom of what was left, and then we're left with whatever is there. So at this point now, you have a couple choices. Depending on how rough your bandsaw left your pieces here, um, you can sand them to flatten them, you can scrape them to flatten them, you can put them through your thickness planer, try not to lose too much of their thickness. You can do whatever method you want, even hand planing if that is your thing, but try to clean up as much of the saw curve as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get all of these boards flattened out and then we can carry on with the next step which will be shaping our compartments. Well, because the kerf on my blade is so thin, I actually didn't have, and this is gonna sound bad, I didn't have as much loss as what I wanted. So I had to use my planer to take some of the pieces down to be able to get the sides of our pencil box to raise above all of our layers here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start on our top layer. Now mine ended up to be about a half of an inch thick and what we're going to do is we're going to, from one end, this is much longer than what we need, but from one end, I'm going to measure in 
at two inches, just as a reference point, and I'm going to square that off to give us a line to reference from. Now this actually, this two inches, will be the end of our pencil box. So how long do we want our total pencil box to be? Well, for me, I think I'd like it to be 11 and a half inches. So we're just gonna mark that on here, 11 and a half. And again, we'll square that off as well. So what I want to do is I want to have a section here that is going to fit pencils. Now, a standard pencil is seven and a half inches. So I would like to have an eight and a half inch section in here that is going to hold my pencils. So for starters, I want to come up from our first line at two inches, a quarter of an inch. That will be the wall of our pencil section. And then I want to come up from there my eight and a half inches. just like that. Now this will be the section that holds our pencils. So once I get those lines marked, what I want to do is I need to draw this out. So I want to come in from the one edge, from each edge actually, I'm going to come in at about 3 16 of an inch. Just like that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side at 3 16 And at each one of these ends, I want to mark the center and I'm going to use my compass and round that off. Once I get that done, I'll take this over to the scroll saw and cut this middle part out. Well, I've gone through all this marking and I'm glad that I didn't cut it because once I thought this through again, I did say earlier I'm winging this. Um, this marking that I just did should be in our bottom section, guys, not our top. So we're going to mark out this exact same thing here, that eight and a half inches long, um, coming in 3 16 from either side, and we'll get that marked out of the bottom section and cut out. And there we have our bottom section cut for our pencils. Um, guys, this may seem a little confusing, but don't worry, it's all going to come together. But our next step that we want to do is our upper piece that we accidentally marked. We're going to change this up just a little bit. And what I want to do is at this end here, remember we measured in two inches, then a quarter inch, and then we carried on with our, our piece. We're going to measure in from one side at an inch and a quarter. There we go. And at that point, we're going to place a 45 degree line. And I'm going to take this over to the table saw and we're going to cut this off. And that will be our pivoting section. Now, this piece here remains the same. But what I want to do is I want to make a smaller section in here to fit other little items, maybe a pencil eraser or a small sharpener. So we're gonna come in 3 16 of an inch on that 45, just like that. And that section here that we drew out from before that at the time was a mistake, um, we're going to cut that out. But we're going to get our circle template first and round off these corners here just to make it a little softer compartment. So we'll get that cut out and get that interior cut out done. Now guys, I just want to point out, we're not cutting anything to its final length at this point because, because of the curve of the table saw here on this cut, we lost an eighth of an inch and we really don't know how our glue up is going to align. So we really want to leave everything kind of loosey goosey at this point. And although I have overkill of material on the either end, um, that's just because that's the stock I had in the rack. You don't need to leave that much, but you'll want to give yourself some wiggle room here that we can trim this all up in the end. So with this one now cut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it on its mating piece and we're just gonna line it up as carefully as we can. We're going to place a mark just like this. 
We're gonna cut this off over at the table saw and then we're going to glue this piece onto our section that we just cut. Align it up as best you can. This is the most important part to line up, is on the length. If you're a little off on the ends, that's okay, we can trim that. Uh, we've left enough here that we can trim it if we have to, but do your best to line it up as best you can. So we'll wait for that to set up, but we also have our original cutout here, um, and we're going to glue its mating piece onto the bottom to form our tray as well. Well, while we're waiting for those other sections to dry up, we're going to do the work on this other half of our upper section. This is our pivoting section. So the very first thing that we want to do is on this 45 line to complete our compartment, I want to put that line at 3 16 of an inch in from the edge. And we're gonna round these corners off here and we're gonna take this over to the scroll saw and we are going to cut this out to give us our compartment in the top half. And then from there, just like we did with our other pieces, we can glue our bottom onto this section, being sure to do our best to line up the long edges on the sides. Well, our longer bottom piece is not completely dry, but it's dry enough that we can move on to the next step. And what that step is going to be is we're going to take our smaller section, this one right here with this 45, we're gonna line it up with the end of our board here, lining up our sides again as best we can, and we're going to glue this in place on our pencil box. With the glue dry, I have taken these pieces over to the jointer. I have flattened out the one side to even up any of our glue joints. It really didn't take much. And then I've taken it over to the table saw and I've trimmed off the other edge to make them nice and parallel and nice and even. I made sure that I used the same settings on both the upper and lower pieces and that way all of our edges will line up. The measurements are identical because they were cut with the same setting. So now we want to turn our attention to our side pieces and we cut these off earlier. Um, I did not plane these down. I left them at their original thickness, which is just a little bit more than the quarter inch that we initially cut off. It's a little closer to 5 16 But what I want to do is we're going to measure the thickness of our lid. I plane this down to 3 16 of an inch, and in our sides at the top, just a little bit above or equal to, you'll see here how we have our pieces lined up, our two sides placed against all of our box pieces. We're gonna line this up here. We can use one of them, give a little mark with a pencil, but we're gonna take this over to the table saw and we're gonna cut a dado in here, just a little bit above this and 3 16 of an inch wide. Probably a little more than 3 16 like a 64th more, just to let this lid slide freely in between those dados. So let me get those dados cut. Um, we're gonna do them about half the depth on these pieces here. So probably about an eighth of an inch deep. Well, the dados are cut, but obviously where this was the original width of our block, it's not gonna fit. So we're going to take a measurement here from the inside edge to the inside edge of our dados, and we're going to rip our lid piece here to be that same distance. In this case, it looks like it's two and nine sixteenths. So I'm gonna cut this to two and nine sixteenths, and then uh, I'll show you how it slides in place. And that should, if I measured properly, slide right in place. There we go, that looks great. With that now done, um, here comes kind of the tricky part, guys. We need to cut our side pieces. Let me just undo these clamps here. We need to cut them on the 45 so that they look right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to mark right across these pieces with a 45 degree in line with where our 
splits in our top layer of boxes go. And we're going to mark that 45 that we need to cut. Now, however, it does not need to be cut all the way down through because the only pivoting point is the top of this box. So that 45 is unnecessary to have cut all the way down through the box. So what I want to do now is I want to take our sides. You can cut these 45s, but only raise your blade as high as what this is deep. And you can cut that 145, you'll line these up so that these marks align, you'll clamp it together, you'll run it through, and then from there you can cut this piece, which will give you this one piece here that is solid. So let me cut the first cut on here and I'll show you what you're looking at at that point. And there's our 245s cut. Now they align here with the front of our box, just like this. Um, I gave you the wrong directions on how to take the measurements. It's not from the top of the box down to this level here. You have to incorporate it from the top of the sides down to this bottom edge right here. So, uh, sorry about that, but you guys have the opportunity to learn from my mistakes. I ended up having to cut it twice. Cut it twice and still too short. <laughs> so. All right, so our next step here is what I need to do is now separate this top section. So I'm going to place a line very carefully along here and I am going to cut this very, very carefully in order to separate this one section off of the top. Well, everybody knows their own comfort zone and for me, you guys probably already know, my comfort zone is the scroll saw. So I changed my mind about doing this on the bandsaw and I did it on the scroll saw. So what we're going to do at this point now, um, we don't need these pieces just yet, but I want to glue this together. This is our lower assembly. So what we can do is we can line up these quarters. You can use a combination square here if you want to help you line these up and get them matching perfectly. These ones here, you will not be able to cut off and trim with a table saw to line them up afterwards. So do your best to line them up really, really well. Give them a good clamping and let them dry up there in place. Once we get that done, what we're going to do is we're going to apply some glue to the sides of our top section. And what I'd like to do is get our lid in place, just like this in both sections so that we can see that everything lines up. We'll slide everything in place, align it the way that we want. And once we're happy with that alignment of the box section and the lid, make sure this slides smoothly in this top section, then we can clamp it together and let the assembly completely dry up. Well, it is the next day. All of our pieces are dried up and I'm just going to use some sandpaper mounted on some three quarter inch thick MDF to flatten out uh, any of our uneven edges. These are a little off not by much, they won't take much to straighten them out, but we're gonna give the entire pencil box a good sanding. Well, our next step is to cut the one end and square it off, and that will be this much thicker end of the pencil box. If you remember with our first markings, we put a mark at a quarter of an inch back from the edge of this circle. I think I'm gonna go back a half an inch from that. I'm gonna use a fine crosscut blade at the table saw, and we're gonna chop this off here and get it nice and square. While we're at it, we're also gonna square up one end of our lid. You now want to take your second layer, your pivoting section. And what we're going to do is we're going to place this here on top of our other piece. We're gonna line it up, trying to get uh, our sides lined up and our 45, and making sure that our lid still slides nicely. Now I notice with mine that when I line up my 45 and I get the lid to slide nice, I've got a bit of an overhang here 
this top is actually a little askew. I'm not going to be too concerned about that because we can clean that up afterwards. I'd rather have it properly aligned at this 45 and have the lid working properly than to have the, the sides lined up right off the bat. And I want the entire length of this to be 12 inches. So I've marked a little mark here at 12 inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the back end of this and right in the middle, this will be at one and a half inches in, uh, I'm going to mark a hole here in the center. And here we're going to drill a quarter inch diameter hole. Not all the way through though, we're gonna stop it at about 3 16 from the bottom of our lower section. With those holes drilled, you can install the pivot pin. And in my case, I have used a quarter inch diameter brass rod. I've just cut uh, a length that is the same depth as our hole. If you don't have brass rod, of course, dowel works too, whatever you like. So we want to drive this into both holes. There we go, and it sits nice and flush there. You can use some CA glue and glue it into the bottom if you like. And there we go, and there is our pivot. See how that works there, exposing the lower half. Perfect. And then our lid will slide in just like this. So I did mention I have this uneven edge here. So we're going to even those up. And one of the last steps, not the last step, but one of is we need to cut this to length. So we're going to take it over to the table saw. We're going to cut everything at the same time. We're going to place our um, lid in place. We're going to line this up with our fence uh, and our cross cut sled and we're going to cut it at 90 degrees, 12 inches long. And with everything cut to length, we have our pivoting box to access the compartment below. And once you get it closed up, you can just take your lid, slide it through, and that keeps everything locked and securely in there. If you want to, you can drill another small pin down through here to lock this lid in place. Um, I'm not going to bother for mine, but there is one more thing that I want to do to this. It's 100% optional, and uh, you know what? Let me get it done, and I'll show you what, I'm, what I've got in mind for the lid. Well, I know that we have a lot of excess length here, and the reason that I have that is because I wanted this to be 12 inches. The reason I wanted it to be 12 inches is for what I've done to the top of it. Guys, I've set up a file, and using my laser engraver, I have engraved both imperial and metric rulers into the sides of this top. So now not only do we get a pencil box, but we have a metric and an imperial ruler. And honestly, I've tested this against all the metric and imperial rulers that I have. And this thing is pretty darn bang on. So guys, if you want a tutorial on how to do that, I can, uh, I can definitely produce one. But uh, if you have a laser engraver, this I think is a great option. But there you go, guys. There is the project completed. And uh, I hope you're gonna give this one a try. And there you have it, a retro style pencil box. Guys, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one. Um, I had an idea of what I wanted to make. I had an idea of how I wanted it to look, but I had no idea of the process of how to get there. So this one right from the beginning for me was all an experiment and a load of fun. Um, what really sets this thing off for me and what really makes it extra special, in my mind anyway, is that laser engraved ruler lid. That thing is spectacular and while I know that this pencil box is a little longer and a little larger than what you would really need, that 12 inch ruler is awfully handy. It now becomes an all-in-one kind of pencil case. You can place your compass in there. You can place a small ruler, some erasers, a small pencil a sharpener, your pencils, and then your top, of course, becomes the ruler that you can use to either draw your lines or take some measurements to make some marks with whatever you're working on. Heck, throw a couple of eraser shields in there and you've got a full kit. 
Guys, what a load of fun. Now that laser engraving is not a necessary thing, but it really does add the finishing touch. And as I said, if you guys are interested in a tutorial of how to make those laser files, by all means, you let me know and I'll try to produce one here on the show. Uh, it'll obviously be in 2024. <laughs> if you guys would just like the files that I've already created for these 12 inch rulers, not a problem. You can email me at kennye at cutabovewoodworkings.com and I'd be more than happy to share those files with you. Either way, guys, give this one a try. It's a load of fun. Make it smaller, make it bigger, make it whatever size you want. The methods are all the same as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't matter how you make it. All that matters is that you make it. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the project. I've really enjoyed this one. I had a good time. This was like a day and a half of playing around, and uh, I had a really awesome time with this one. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have a fantastic audience base. We have great conversations down below, and I hope that you're going to consider becoming a part of that. Guys, thank you once again for tuning in. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to try this one for yourself. But more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. <laughs>